from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. This is from the south. I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. We begin in Ecuador, where thousands of students have rallied in Quito to protest against found cuts to universities for the 2019 public budget proposed by the government of Lenny Moreno. The austerity measures come in a series of moves by the go current government to promote what students consider neoliberal policies. The students, in, the students from public and private universities are demanding an increase to the budget for public higher education. They also ask for authorities to sit at a negotiation table with university students and teachers. We are marching to reject the cuts in the public university budget, which President Lenin Moreno is trying to implement in the 2019 budget. It is important for all of us, students, to resist together against the government measures. We are marching to reject the cuts in the public university budget, which President Lenin Moreno is trying to implement in the 2019 budget. It is important for all students to resist together against the government measures. Our correspondent Denise Herrera brings us more from the student demonstration in Quito. Hello, good afternoon. Students from Ecuadorian public and private university were marching today in Quito against huge education cuts presented in the state general budget presented by the Ministry of Economy, Richard Martinez, who confirmed and announced that there is a good bug uh, on the budget, on, on in the state budget, approximately 145 million are contemplated for higher education. Students are demanding today that it represent a setback on education policy and also they are calling to the authorities, they are calling to President Lenin Moreno to meet them and they can be part of the discussion about this uh, general budget. They try to, to talk with President Lenin Moreno but the police stop them. So it's all for now, back to you at the studio. A week ahead of the G20 meeting in Argentina, former leaders Cristina Fernández de Kirchner, Dilma Rousseff and José Mujica are leading the first worldwide forum on critical thinking. Other world leaders, intellectuals and activists gather at the four-day meeting to discuss social issues affecting the region. Former Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff addressed concerns about Lula da Silva's imprisonment. He al she also discussed the policies of President-elect Jair Bolsonaro. The team of the event is fighting for equality, social justice and democracy. Uh, have turned their back on our America. Our correspondent Jorge Gestoso is covering the forum and brings us the latest from Buenos Aires. Thank you. Here in Buenos Aires this morning started the World Forum of the Strategic Thinking organized by Claxo and uh, it's going to go in on throughout the week. The first orator was the former president of Brazil, Dilma Rousseff, and she was putting emphasis in the situation in Brazil using the word tragedy. She mentions that in Brazil, with the new president Bolsonaro, the country is living a tragedy. Most effectively, she insists that disguised with another name, what in reality took place there was a coup d'etat, was a different from other parts of the history where there were military uh, coups. Now they are using different strategies, but the idea was the determination around the world to reimpose neoliberal uh, recipes in terms of the economy. And she was saying that it has an incredible high cost uh, for the population. Everything, she insists, that has been gained through all the years of President Lula and her own presidency in terms of uh, social achievements are being dismantled at big time at the expense of the quality of life of the people. And she ended up her uh, speech saying that most definitely America, uh, in terms of Brazil and Latin America in general, has the opportunity to resist being involved in the economic and democratic processes 
in our countries because she believes that sooner or later, most definitely, through Lula, through her, through another options, but uh, what uh, has been a successful story of social achievements are going to go back and neoliberal recipes are going to be uh, most definitely challenged. We'll get back to you now. Let's hear more of what former Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff had to say. Terrorist law, which will criminalize the social movements. And if, and if you express solidarity with them, you will be criminalized as well. These legal measures is a process of radicalizing what was already happening. And this will attack the most important social movements, political and the progressive, progressive political parties, left political parties, or even anybody who diverges, dissents. Because I think we're taking a pace beyond, beyond the previous stage. That's why we need a, a popular and democratic front. That's why we have to bring together all those who want to fight authoritarianism. And also speaking at Claxo, the former Argentine president Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner spoke on the devastating effects of neoliberal policies on Argentina. This is the result of the return of neoliberalism. We could talk about the situation of pensioners, about the situation of unemployment. When we finished our government in 2015, it was 5.9%. And now, it's certainly in two figures, and it's growing after the elimination of thousands and thousands of jobs, what we all know. Almost 3,000 people have been evacuated in Guatemala after the Fuego volcano erupted again. Authorities declared a red alert as security forces closed roads and helped with the evacuations. In June, the Fuego volcano exploded, killing more than 300 people. Our correspondent in Guatemala, Santiago Botón, brings us the details. A red alert has been issued in the municipality of Escuintla for a new eruption of the Fuego Volcano. Several rescue operation teams are working together to evacuate many families living near the volcano, which killed many people in June 2018. Rescue teams announced that 500 people have been evacuated already and say they are working on moving 2,000 people to Escuintla's stadium. Last night, local authorities of the Zacatepec and Squintla departments held a meeting to coordinate evacuation procedures along with community authorities. A group of about 800 migrants has set out from Mexicali towards Tijuana to join the caravan already at the border. While many in Mexicali were able to find room inside shelters, others were not so lucky. They are reportedly going to Tijuana in hopes of finding shelter while waiting on their asylum request. This group you see here is planning to go to Tijuana to see if they can accommodate us or to see if we can get by over there. The truth is that we are a large crowd and we want to see how we can head to Tijuana, even if we can get rides or at least get on the back of trucks or maybe catch a bus and go bit by bit and see how we can help anyone who couldn't make it. The truth is that there is no room for us here in Mexicali. The idea of the caravan was for all of us to stay together since the day we set out. They say that the meeting point will be Tijuana, not Mexicali. We are here because the shelters over in Tijuana are full. Mexican police stopped hundreds of anti-migrant protesters from reaching a migrant shelter in the city of Tijuana. Tijuana residents had previously protested the migrants' arrival at the border city. They shouted no to the invasion in reference to the caravans. For their part, migrants say these demonstrations are isolated incidents that do not represent the Mexican people. And after being temporarily closed down overnight, the border crossings of San Isidro has been reopened. Authorities say the crossings was closed to beef up security with around 100 soldiers installing barbed wire barriers. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this.
the founder and lead singer of legendary rock band Pink Floyd, has finally been allowed to fly the Amazon region of Ecuador. He's visiting communities affected by decades of oil pollution caused by the Chevron Texaco. Waters arrived in the capital Quito, but was initially denied permission for his chartered plane to fly on the Lago Agrio in the oil region. In this video, an airport security official is seen trying to explain to Waters that there is an issue on the, with the size of his plane. Before Waters landed, one of the lawyers for the affected communities suggested this could be the work of Chevron pressuring the Ecuadorian government to stop Waters. So right now we have the people of Ecuador have arranged for Roger Waters, the, the musician, to visit yeah. them in the Amazon today. Roger Waters. And we just got word that the government of Ecuador is trying to deny his plane the right to land on Lago Agrio, which would completely screw up the whole day. There's probably 30 or 40 affected peoples in Lago Agrio Airport right now waiting for his arrival and a lot of journalists. It's very obvious Chevron is trying to block Roger Waters from coming into Ecuador because Chevron does not want Roger to learn the truth about Chevron's environmental crimes and fraud yeah, in this country. So right now we're trying to work through this problem and get Roger the permission he needs to land his charter in Lago Agrio so he can continue with his tour and inspect the damaged sites that Chevron left in Ecuador. People in Peru have protested outside the Uruguayan ambassador's residence in Lima after former President Ala Garcia applied for asylum. Demonstrators at the site protested in support and against the former president Gar Garcia's under investigation for allegedly receiving bribes from Brazilian construction company Odebrecht during the construction of an electric train in the capital. We are angry because it's not possible for the Uruguayan embassy to give asylum to a president who caused so much damage to the country and who is currently being legally investigated by the judiciary. Garcia's lawyer has responded to the, his client asylum request. We hope the political asylum requested to the Republic of Uruguay is accepted. Once it is granted, the government of President Martin Vizcarra can go through international shame by denying the safe conduct for former President Garcia. Our correspondent in Lima, Jaime Herrera, has the latest on Garcia's political asylum request. Former President Alan Garcia is staying at the Uruguayan ambassador's home for the second day in a row. He went there to apply for political asylum and is now waiting the response on this request. This after a judge in Lima ordered that he not be allowed to leave the country for 18 months following the Attorney General's office investigation into Garcia for money laundering and corruption. The former president's lawyer said they decided to ask for asylum after they heard rumors that the Attorney General's office would ask for preventive detention for Garcia. Protests have been taking place outside the Uruguayan ambassador's home in Lima and and more protests are expected today. Meanwhile, Peruvian President Martin Vizcarra has said there is no political persecution in Peru and that all citizens should answer to the law. Meanwhile, local media outlets have started reporting on this story using headlines such as Fugitive Flees Justice and He Escapes for the Second Time. Thank you, Jaime, for that report. Over 100 students from Santander and Popayán march more than a 500 kilometers to arrive to Bogota on Sunday. They're condemning military force used recently against the student movement. They're also demanded a higher budget for public education. This process of demonstration in which 123 students from Popayán and Santander are taking part is headed step by step for education to the city of Bogota. Among our demands, we are seeking guarantees for social protest. Students are taking part in an indefinite national strike demanding a higher education budget. We reject the mistreatment by and the deployment of the military against the student movement. We've been attacked, hunted and sabotaged and we need guarantees to demonstrate and that's why we are here in Cali and we headed for our next stop in Buga. Colombia's public prosecutor has found a cyanide bottle in the house of a key witness in the Odebrecht case who died last week. Jorge Enrique Pisano passed away from a heart attack three days before his son died poisoned. Authorities explained they found the poison in a plastic bag kept under a bathroom sink. 
Before passing away, Pisano revealed in an interview that the general attorney knew about the bribe briberies involving the construction company Odebrecht. Barbados Prime Minister has welcomed the recent upgrade from International Rating Agency Standard and Poor's as great news. Prime Minister Mia Modley said that this means that the island is well on its way to economic recovery. On Friday, Standard and Poor's raised its long and short term local currency ratings for Barbados. It also assigned a B local currency issue rating on the domestic debt. As the Prime Minister of Barbados Committee. The International Poetry Festival has started in Dominican Republic. Poets from Cuba, Spain, Argentina, Colombia and Italy, among others, will take part in the four-day festival. The festival will be held in various cities throughout the country, hosting conferences and special activities. The Dominican poet and journalist Tomás Hernández will be honored. An indigenous delegation from Chile's Easter Island is heading to London to ask the British Museum to return one of the most culturally significant statues. The delegation of the island's native Rapua Nui people seeks to return um, of a more than two meter tall basalt figure taken by a British explorer in 1868. It is one of thousand statues carved by islanders more than 3,000 years ago. The British Museum said it is willing to, re to consider their request. We are traveling to be able to touch the hearts of the English and get them to understand the point of view of the Rapa Nui people. For them, the British Museum is a famous millennium old statue. For us, it's an ancestor that we need to return to Rapa Nui. We've gone 150 years without it. We'll take a short break now. More news in a minute. Welcome back. Iran intends to continue exporting oil despite U.S. sanctions. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani says the sanctions are part of a psychological war which will not succeed. In fact, he adds that Washington doesn't even have international support it needs to implement these, those sanctions. Israeli Education Minister Naftali ben Bennett is backtracking on his resignation threats thereby averting a snap election. Bennett had threatened to pull his Jewish party out of the government over the, pri over the prime minister's decision to agree to a ceasefire with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. In about turn, however, he announced he will now stand by the prime minister's side. In recent days, Netanyahu had held talks with ministers to try to keep his coalition government together. Canada's Redesigned $10 bill featuring black civil rights icon Viola Desmond is now in circulation. Back in 19, 1946, Davis, a successful Nova, Sco Nova Scotia businesswoman, refused to leave a whites only area of a movie theater. She was subsequently arrested and jailed. Her case is one of the first legal challenges against racial segregation brought by a black woman in Canada. British Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt has said that the United Kingdom will remain committed to uh, Iran nuclear deal despite the United States government pulling out of the deal. The Foreign Secretary spoke following a meeting with Iranian Supreme National Security Council Secretary Ali Shakmani. Hunt said that the United Kingdom will not take approach of the United States in, deal, in, the, in dealing with the situation in the Middle East and will continue to engage in legitimate trade with Iran. You know, we have a view in this country and it's one of the very rare occasions where we don't take the same approach as the United States that the Iran nuclear deal is a good thing because the situation in the Middle East is complex enough, it's toxic enough, it's dangerous enough uh, that to have a nuclear power in the midst of it would make things even more dangerous. So we support this deal um, and we want to find a way for countries that wish to trade legitimately with Iran to do so. European Union ministers have met in Belgium to discuss preparations for the Brexit summit. 
ministers from the 27 non-British member states met to prepare a planned extraordinary European Council to sign off on the UK Brexit withdrawal. Both sides are also scrambling to prepare a roadmap for the post-Brexit negotiations. <laughs> President of the renowned Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance, Carlos Ghosh, has been arrested in Tokyo over claims of financial misconduct. The Brazilian board auto boss allegedly submitted false numbers to the Tokyo Stock Exchange Security Report. He's also accused of under-reporting his pay package and using company money for personal expenses. Nissan said in a statement that the director's behavior has a clear violations of the duty of care. Mitsubishi has proposed removing Goss as chairman. Anti-fuel tax protesters have blocked the roads in north of France in its third day of protest. Dozens of barricades were set on motorways and roundabouts to, ref to refuse fuel taxes. Since Saturday, nearly 300,000 demonstrators have taken to the streets across the country. 400 people were injured during the demonstration, known as the Yellow Vest Protest. The, Ger the German government has banned the 18 Saudi nationals linked to the murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi from entering the European Union Schengen Zone. Foreign Minister Keiko Maas said this decision to ban uh, the 18 from entering Europe was reached at after discussions between, the Germ between Germany, the United Kingdom and France. He added that Germany is willing to take further action as more details about the murder emerge. As for the Khashoggi case, we still have more questions than answers, both about the crime as such and about who's behind it. That's why we were in close discussion with our French and British friends in recent days. And we decided that Germany would put an entry ban in the Schengen system database beside the names of 18 Saudi citizens who were suspected of being involved in the crime. We said last weekend that we were expecting further developments in the investigation and that we would follow it closely and remain ready to take further action. The six-month-long journey of NASA's latest Mars lander will be ending soon. The landed name InSight is scheduled to land on the red planet on November 26th. And the German space agency has revealed that InSight carries a self-hammering probe name HP3 that will dig, that will able to dig three to five meters deep into the Martian surface and place heat sensor underground. Inside, main task is to listen for Mars quakes ahead of eventual human missions and study the planet's interior conditions. When we measure this heat, we will know more about the activity, the dynamics of the Martian engine. We don't just want to see what's inside Mars, but also learn how it works. And we come to the end of this news brief. These and many other stories you can find on our website at telesurenglish.net. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. Thank you for watching. Our actions.